yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for all you wonderful people out there, you're watching me, you're watching this video at this time, ain't nothing wrong with that video, I just got to tell you that the reason why I wanted to do it this way is that you would know what our children are facing. See, there are many things that are going on out there and you can't see it. The reason why you can't see it is because life is pressure. And the moments in life are keeping you busy. But our children are exposed to drugs and crime. They're exposed to so much elements out there. They need somebody that is out there exposed also to be an example. And I think the Lord has truly chosen me, Jerry Thompson, to be an example. The reason why is because I got a testimony and it goes a little bit like this. I was involved out there. I was the man with a gun in my waist. Yeah, that's right, gun in my waist. I'm not proud of it. Don't think that I'm here to talk to you because I want to prove that I can be bad. I'm here because I'm one of the stories that turned out good. And that is the reason why I want you to know that there is hope for those who are out there. There's plenty of hope for the drug dealer. There's plenty of hope for the man that's carrying the gun. There's plenty of hope for the girl that's doing prostitution. There's plenty of hope for each and every one. And I'm going to tell you my story now. And it all started in Orlando, Florida. Not but about two years ago, by the time you receive this video or this tape, it'll be about two years. And I want you to know that the only thing that can change, changes, and there are truly changes that are needed to be made, is the word. Something that each and every one of us have in us and do not even realize how powerful that word is. The police can't change things. They can try. They spend millions and millions of dollars on the drugs, trying to prevent drugs, but the only thing that we have is that secret weapon, and it's called L-O-V-E. And that word love is gonna shine a light that you may see who's speaking right now. The word love is strong. Let me say it to you over and over and let the light shine and come to you. Love, love changes things. Love gives you light and light gives you love. And I sincerely mean that folks, I'm here not to waste my time anymore because I've wasted enough already. What I have done is I've put the gun down and that is the way I've expressed love. How can you express love to those who are out there like myself? Can you help them that they may put their gun down? That they may stop dealing the drugs? It all happened as I was saying to you before. In Orlando, Florida, I was walking around with a gun in my waist. Just waiting for a good reason to squeeze it off. And believe me, if you're on the street and you're running around with a gun, you're always looking out for yourself and the guy that's going to rub you just the wrong way. Just the wrong way. Because you feel secure. Because you're on the street and you don't know what's going to come your way. But let me tell you, the man that's out there with that gun, I trust that this testimony may be a help for you. Because when I went down in Orlando, Florida, leaving Canada, thinking that I was going to be in the land of opportunity where I would do better than I was doing in Canada. Better didn't come my way. Better starts from the home. Better starts from within the heart. Better starts from when the word of God says, young man, I call you because you're young and strong to go into the highways and byways. To tell somebody about love. To tell somebody about what your mother taught you as a young man growing up. Mothers, fathers, I want to truly thank you for being there, for teaching me. Grandma, I want to give all the grandmothers the uttermost respect because the word of God says, grow a child the way in which he ought to be grown and he shall not. 
cannot depart from it. I have had that experience that it is true. Because I was on my way to go shoot somebody in Florida, a place they call Ivy Lane. And I saw a church on the right hand side. And I felt compelled to walk into that church. But you know what it was that compelled me? The seed that was planted as a, as a young man. That seed that grow with inside of me to become a full grown man. But through the path of life I took a wrong turn. And for all you people out there that has taken that wrong turn, I want to tell you that there is a better way. That's why I love Martin Luther King when he said, I have a dream. Dreams are made to come true. And dreams can become reality. But in those dreams you need a plan. And in reality, we need to succeed, to become a better people, to become one. As the word says, united we stand, divided we fall. I've never known a man to clap one hand, it takes two hands to clap. The chain is only as strong as the weakest link, folks. Which link are you going to be? You're either a part of the problem or a part of the solution. I thank God for Jesus because... 14 months ago I became a part of the solution and no longer part of the problem. Jesus brought me into that church and I knelt down and I said, Lord Jesus, I have no right to kill nobody because he's done me wrong. And this was a man that I had bought a car from, a Porsche, because I had the money. I bought a car from this man and he, had, he told me that the speedometer reading was only 80,000 miles. And I took it after a week of owning that vehicle and checked the compression to see how much mileage was on the engine. And I found out it was 180,000 miles, folks. That's right, 180,000. I got angry. I got angry and being the hostile person as I was, I said, I'm going to get even with that man. I'm going to get even. I went looking for that man and I said to him, I said, sir, you ripped me off. You robbed me knowingly. And that man looked at me and he says, Hey, that's just the way things are. But I ain't going to give you back your money. I said, Sir, you don't understand. I'm willing to give you $1,800 out of that money for the one week of ownership of that vehicle because I was the one that was partially wrong also by buying the car by not admitting my mistake. So I'm admitting my mistake, I was wrong to purchase this car without checking it out properly. But here's $1,800 you can take from the money and give me the balance. That man said no. And being as I just got, went to Florida, I said, well, I just got here. I'm not going to make no friends this way by being bad. So let me keep it cool. I'm going to go through the courts. And I went through a small claims court where judges and jury just get together and sort of hear your problem and tell you who's at fault before you have to go to a Supreme Court. And they told me that this man was wrong to sell your vehicle at that mileage that he said it was. He lied to you. And in the state of Florida, Canada, throughout the United States, you cannot mess with an odometer. It's against the law. It's illegal. So I thought that was grounds enough to get back my money. Anyway, this man felt that he ain't going to give me my money. So he took it upon himself to come looking for me. He came down by a place that I used to hang out. And he asked, is Jerry Thompson there? And a friend of mine says, no, he ain't here. You missed him by two minutes. Just two minutes ago, he rushed out of here. And when that man turned around, my friend saw him with a gun in his pocket holding on to the trigger because he only saw the, the handle of the gun had it been me that answered that door I would not be here to testify today because in Florida they don't warn you they're going to kill you they just do it or they leave you alone and because of those two minutes those two minutes why I'm here today I want to tell you something God is real you know how I know God is real? Because he made a change in my life. 
He gave me those two minutes to decide whether I wanted life or death. And I chose life. But I didn't choose it just then. I figured I was angry. This man was gonna die. I went home and cleaned my gun. And I looked up his address in the phone book. And I went looking for this man. You hear what I'm saying? I said I went looking for this man because I saw myself putting three bullets in this man. I wanted to murder him. But you know what? That church on Ivy Lane. What my mama taught me as a young man growing up, son. If you try everything and everything fail, try Jesus. Because the word of God says, knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given. There was no minister there to say, Jerry, don't do it. There was no friend there to say, Jerry, it's wrong to take somebody's life. Because you know when the chips are down, there ain't nobody there. The decision is yours. And believe me, sometimes, many times, I find myself between a rock and a hard place. Just like you. The place that you are at right now, my friend. Listen to me, drugs dealer. Hear me, man. Hear what I'm saying. Give yourself a better chance. Try Jesus. If you put the drugs in the right pocket, believe me, God is there. Put them in the left. So when the deal doesn't go down and somebody draw a knife at you, or draw a gun at you, you can't do nothing else. Cry out for Jesus. Because remember, you got nothing else. And believe me, you'll find out how much power is in his name. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Because he says, greater is he that is in me, O oh God, than he that is in the world. He came not for the righteous. Listen to me now, hear me. He came not for the righteous, O oh God, but for the lost. The one that has the problem. The one that, 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 that just can't find a way out. You're the one that he's interested in. You're the one because he done it for me. And my God said he's no respect as a person. He will save you. Only if you give him a chance. And that is the reason why today I left Florida. I went looking for that man. Yeah, I did. But I ended up in that church. Thank God for Jesus. I want to say thank you, Jesus, because you brought me out of the miry clay. You set my feet on the rock to stand, to go out there and tell my pimp friends, my, my, my prostitute friends, everybody, anybody that knows me. And who does not know me, Sharon, believe me, honey, you will not be a stripper forever. Mike, hear me, man. You will not always be in the position that you are. I cannot disclose it even though your name is not the last name. I can't give it. But remember me. Because I was there once. And look what the Lord has done. I did not do it through self. But he that believeth shall have life. And if you believe that your life can change. He says ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. I did ask. I said Lord Jesus. Make a change in me. Give me a renewing, renewing of my strength. Restore my joy. I remember before I found Jesus, I used to phone my mother when I needed strength. I had all my prostitute girls around me. I had all kinds of people around me that said they loved me. But the kind of love that they were giving me was not what I was looking for. And some of you know what I'm talking about because some of you have lost, gained what you wanted, but lost what you had. And what you had was what was for you. And now what you've gained, you truly realize that, uh-uh, this ain't gonna work. But remember, Jesus saves, he keeps, and he sanctifies. And he will fill you with his love. He will fill you with his grace. Because he said his grace is sufficient to keep you. And I just want to tell you, oh, hi. I got Jesus on my journey because I can't make it by myself. I got Jesus on my journey because when everybody else fails, Jesus never fails. He never fails. He is my everything. He is my